we have the three in the last 20 years of this franchise. Uh, Toby McGuire, who of course started it all with the first three Spider-Men. Hi, Toby. Hello. <laughs> 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 the pioneer in this. And then of course, Andrew Garfield, who carried it on in the next two. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah. And now Tom Holland, who's uh, completed his first trilogy. We'll find out if there's more <laughs> with Tom Holland right here. Uh, welcome and wow. Uh, I have to say right off the bat, did any of you have any idea that this movie would have the impact that it's had around the globe beyond all expectations, I think, even for Spider-Man? I mean, Tom, did you, uh, you know, having just done the third one now? I mean, I think I, I always knew that this film would be would be loved around the world. I didn't think it would be quite as massive as it has been. You know, one of my favorite things to do at the minute is to go online and watch fans reactions to you guys coming in that one scene in particular. I, I, I just I, I don't think I could ever have imagined it being so well received by by everyone. Um, so no, I mean, I guess I had an idea that people would love this movie, but in no way, shape or form could I have thought it was going to be as big as it has been. Uh, and it's been, you know, only the last couple of weeks have I sort of really come back to reality and come home and started to face real world problems. And it feels like we've been on some sort of really weird dream. It feels really strange. <laughs> It, it does in a, in a way, but it was so, it's so exciting. I had the advantage of being at the very first press screening. So to me, it was brand new, which is the way anybody should see a movie. And, and when Toby and Andrew come in, that audience reaction was like nothing I've experienced in a long time. And especially now in the age of COVID, it was so, it's hmm. so great. This movie seems so needed to restore our faith in movies and the movie going experience. Toby and Andrew, I have to ask you though, how did you get involved? I mean, when they came to you, I can't imagine, Toby, they said, oh, we want you to do Spider-Man again. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I went and had a meeting with um, uh, Amy and uh, Kevin, Amy Pascal and Kevin Feige, and, and had talked about, they sort of just, you know, teased it. I think Amy was like, we'd love to talk to you and you, you know what this is about. Um, and I was like, okay, sure. Uh, <laughs> let's have a chat. And I think with Amy, you're like, no, I don't, Amy. No, <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I like, <laughs> Maybe you could just to give me a, a little bit of information, but I don't know. I was, I gotta say, I was intrigued immediately. Like in, in that conversation, the intention, the kind of love and celebration of these movies and what it meant, I think, to Amy and Kevin was was apparent. And to me, when artists or you know people who are um, steering the creative process have a kind of authentic, genuine intent of celebration and love, it, it, it just was so apparent in both of them that, I don't know. I just wanted to join that. And um, I'm a big fan of Tom and those movies and Andrew. So it was definitely intriguing. But but yes, I was also going, well, what what are we going to do? Um, and and that was a bit mysterious. I did appreciate what was shared, but it was really about getting together with these people and revisiting, you know, what what was part of my history and and getting a chance to like come together and um there there are personal things too which are um kind of resolutions or um a way to revisit and and um i'm not quite sure how to put it it's just just to get to get back into that and i don't want to say like close the chapter but revisit and have certain resolutions um and and just join in this like loving creative spirit yeah, it's amazing. What about for you, Andrew? I thought, well, with Tick, Tick, Boom, and with the eyes of Tammy Faye, uh, we've seen a lot of Andrew Garfield in fantastic performances this year alone. When I saw this movie, I wasn't expecting a third one that, on that. And amazing uh, to see you back in in these uh, in this costume and and this franchise. Uh, 
so for you what was what was it like going back well i was just waiting to see if toby was going to do it and if toby was going to do it <laughs> and I, I i was like well i have no choice you know he i, <laughs> I follow toby to the, to the ends to the ends of the earth i'm a lemming for toby um no i but that was a sincerely a big part of it you know when when i was approached about it and and again, in a, in a similar way to what Toby was saying, it was like, oh, the intention feels very pure here. It actually feels like a great creative idea and a great creative story. It wasn't like they were just asking us to come and say hi and then leave again, but actually have us have our presence being in service to Tom, you know, being in service to to, to Tom's journey and and where where he is as Peter Parker and how I, I love the destiny feeling of um the multiverse expanding in this film and actually that without toby's peter and andrew's peter being present for tom's peter at this very moment he may not become the peter parker that he's supposed to become i love that there's and 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 the and that maybe he'll he would have lost his girlfriend and that maybe he would have gone down a, a darker path if if toby hadn't have given hadn't have given um him that that kind of mentorship moment that better angel kind of moment so it was those things. I get chills thinking about it even now. Um, so, so for me, it was like, and it's the same kind of um, judgment call with any script or any film. It's like, is this a story worth telling? And do I want to work with these people? And, and it was a big double kind of capitalized yes. And then it exceeded my expectations because the way that Tom and Zen Zendaya and Jacob are as a trio is just like a kind of magical heaven kind of friendship and then so welcoming of me and toby into the into the gang and then the way that tom works with john watts and, and kevin and amy it's like it's very open it's very free and uh so so toby and i felt not only welcomed but actually given lots of permission to to play and to to kind of find find our way into being of service to to Tom's Tom's story in this way. And it was just a kind of joyful few weeks that we all got to spend together, which far ex I, I, you know, could have been an absolute not like you, you, you kind of think, well, getting three Spider-Men together could, could go one of two ways. And uh, I think it's a testament to the to these guys that, that it, it went it went the way that it went, which was a brotherhood, which is just beautiful. I have to say, uh, Toby, I just read this morning, Sam Raimi, just praising this re reunion of all three of you are the uh, you know putting you all on the screen together and what it was in this film i mean he loved it which is high praise coming from the original director here i think how sweet i haven't i haven't seen that yeah just came out this morning someone asked him one of the trade papers and uh he just had high praise high praise tom for you working with them i i'm wondering did you have any kind of rehearsal time to get used to this idea or did you just jump in and uh, you're all in your uh, spider-man uh, motif here yeah I, it was uh it was daunting it was very daunting because we were a long way into shooting before you guys showed up you know we were maybe three months into principal photography and you know the the date of the other Spider-Mans are coming was etched on my calendar and I was getting closer and closer and closer. And, you know, the closer and closer I got, the more and more nervous I was. And then as soon as I met you guys in Atlanta, I realized I had nothing to be nervous about. But on our first, at our first rehearsal, I had asked Jacob and Zendaya to come with me to just kind of be there as like, my support system like i'm gonna go meet these guys i'm really nervous about it we have to read the scene and i don't know how this is going to go because we're all playing the same character and we all have to bring our own kind of heart and soul into this and you know it means a lot to them and it means a lot to me does it mean the same so jacob and zendaya were there on that first day but i think it was really strange and almost a little unfair how they had us put the suits on and then just jump around in front of a camera together like that was one of the most bizarre experiences of my life. And again, Jacob and Zendaya were there for that to support me. But it was an amazing experience. And from day one, it was a roller coaster that I didn't want to get off. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. And like you said, Andrew, like it was so collaborative. It was so playful, you know, from you cracking Toby's back to, to you coming up with the idea of pointing at us. Like it was all stuff that we came up with on the day. Um, and it was just a lot of fun to be able to play with three guys in Spider-Man suits. It was a, a strange experience, but one that I won't ever forget.
Yeah, you know, and how did you guys keep this a secret so well? <laughs> I, I know there's all that pressure on you, but I mean, it really was a well-kept secret, and that's a hard thing to do in the age of social media and the internet and speculation. And did they threaten you with anything here or what? <laughs> you had the worst of it, though, Andrew, You because you were doing press for months. <laughs> Yeah, like <laughs> out there, man. I'm like out there, and everyone's like, "Why is Andrew Garfield on a press tour just denying Spider-Man?" Like <laughs> the other two films. I'm like, dudes, like, like look at this stuff. So yeah, no, I definitely think I had the hardest time. You had the worst part of it, yeah. Thrust into the world just like coincided with uh, having to lie, having to lie for the sake of that audience reaction. I think so, and I know, you know I it, it's I equate it to like you know when you're organizing a surprise birthday party for someone that you love and they keep telling, they keep saying, mate, just tell me I hate surprises. You know, I hate surprises, but deep down, you know, they will love the surprise. I justified my ethical kind of <laughs> like un unethical lying behavior. I call it fibbing more than lying. Right. It was quite, I kind of enjoyed it. It was quite fun. And it kind of it felt, felt like a game of that game werewolf or mafia where you, you know, you're the werewolf and you have to convince everyone that you're not. So I kind of like turned it into a little bit of a game for myself. I don't know. And it, and it did result in this kind of like, even though there were all these leaks and all this stuff happening, I think like there was enough doubt in, in everyone's mind going, Oh God, what if it isn't, what if it isn't, what if they don't show up? <laughs> uh, and then, so when we did, it kind of gave them that little extra little bit of icing on top of an already incredibly deep. Like I watched the movie with Toby for the first time and I was in pieces. Like this is a deep movie. This isn't just mm. fan service, which, you know, it partially is, but like, this is a movie that is about a coming of age, like an acceptance of loss, acceptance of death, taking responsibility for your gifts and the like I was torn open by the journey that Tom went on and that he was having to, it was just like having to split with, with, with his girlfriend and his best friend and sacrifice that in order. It's just, it's the, it's classic Peter Parker, but it felt totally fresh and totally reimagined. Like his origin, like Tom's origin story was happening in his third movie rather than his first. Like there's something so profound. So the film I feel stands alone without me and me and Toby showing up. I hope we enhance it, but like, I think John and Tom have made just something actually that is exceptionally moving, especially for young people. You know, I think it's, I think it's a beautiful film. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, it is highly emotional. You have some, those close-ups of you, you know, with uh, Aunt May and then yeah. uh, beyond and the whole coda, you know, if you haven't seen the movie, hold your ears because that ending is really touching it. And, and it's unlike what we've seen before in in the spider-man universe so, so to play that must have been emotional too i would think yeah i mean it was emotional uh there definitely was a sense for me as an actor that this was the last time that i could potentially don the suit so a lot of that emotion came from the act of saying goodbye which is one of the biggest themes throughout this film so you know thankfully i was really able to draw on my own experience and my own feelings in those moments um but this film also felt like a huge celebration. You know, this movie really is a celebration of three generations of cinema. Uh, so at times we would be getting into these scenes that were incredibly emotional, that, you know, they're very taxing. And I was so happy to be there that I had to go at it a different way and kind of go, wow, look at my life. Look what's happened to me. I'm working with Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield and we're telling this story. And I would get emotional at kind of how proud I was of the situation that we were in and that what we were doing and that I really believed in what we were doing. Um, so yeah, it was tough, but you know, anything hard is, is, is worthwhile. Um, and, you know, I was, I was happy to kind of really push myself and, and, and to make this film, you know, more emotional than superhero films have been in the past. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so a lot of it was, I was drawing on my own kind of feelings as we went along. Yeah, Toby, this feels like a culmination. In fact, I, I did a little interview with Amy Pascal and she described it that way. She said, this movie is a culmination of 20 years, what began with you and your three and now going full circle here. Uh, is that the way you look at it too when you looked at this, that this is like the end of one thing, maybe the beginning of another somehow, but, but the end here of what you started? 
Well, I, I'll say I remember being on set and it was, I believe, our last day, Andrew, and it was uh, it was really amazing. And I had I had the awareness of this, you know, the, the 20 years of history. But looking at um, Amy and Kevin and realizing that they've been there through all the different iterations and it was really powerful just personally it was really powerful it was powerful for me to be working with andrew and tom and powerful in a in a legitimately moving emotional way and then to witness amy and kevin and consider their journeys through all the films it was it was really impactful um and and yeah i was i was just grateful every day i really it was such a rich experience and as the guys have touched on the kind of um, sharing of something and the the brotherhood of it. It was it was just so rich, emotional, and I I don't know I I don't not like sitting there conceptually thinking about that all the time. But I would have moments where that kind of stuff would hit me. You know, day to day it was it was just a beautiful kind of unfolding of this story and these relationships. So I was more just like in in that. Uh, on the day to day, but I'd have these like reflection moments, which were quite powerful and and elegantly woven ultimately, because it's actually you're thinking about taking 20 years of history and revisiting that, and how do you how do you balance um, all of these things? And each each of our kind of series of films have, you know, they're the characters are we're playing the same character, but they're also unique and and the the way those films and characters evolved in those films are unique. And then to bring all of that together, including, um, uh, you know, all of our super villains and, and all of that, it's, it was pretty wild to witness the immensity of all of this history coming together and being put into what Andrew is saying is this, you know, standalone worthwhile story um, and, and I too just wanted to say with, with the coda of the movie, I was really touched emotionally, but also I just thought it had such a sweet elegance to it. Like that was so amazing. And I, I agree in terms of the origin story and the kind of coming of age or, or, you know, Tom, your character stepping into this different kind of maturity and responsibility and all done with this like really sweet, sad, elegant touch. It was it was mm. just beautiful. Yeah, it, it's um, it's it's a remarkable movie the way they did this. I got a big shout out here to John Watts, who I had seen Cop Car, and I think the first time I talked to you, Tom, it was with John, and when you had done the first Spider Man, and all all I could do to do is talk about this little movie Cop Car that he did, and think, wow, this guy's going somewhere. What was it like working? with John on this film for you guys. Andrew and, and, and uh, uh, Toby had not before, obviously Tom had. What was that experience like? It's so funny because what Toby just said about the kind of, I, in those moments of awareness where you realize you were, that we were uh, bringing in 20 years of history and then some into a frame every day, that hugeness that, we, that I know that we only got a sense of in moments and i remember maybe the first time i got a sense of it where where i think we were on a scaffolding and like we were talking to dr strange who wasn't actually there and tom turned to us and said there's something that doesn't feel quite right about this it feels a bit awkward or like we just kind of stood here and and both me and toby were like yeah this feels a little weird we feel a little odd and, and then in that moment john watts comes up the um the scaffold and goes that's the movie that's it we got it it's the it's <laughs> part of the film this is this is the moment and we're all like <laughs> we're insane then <laughs> we weren't seeing what he was seeing which he then just showed us and it was just the three of us in our suits in the same frame and just how profoundly moving that is unto itself for spider-man fans the world over and i think it was at that point where i was like oh no this is gonna people are gonna like this movie a lot <laughs> you know like or this this element of things but in regards to the bigness that Toby was talking about, it also mostly just felt very small. Like we were making cop car, like we were 
just doing an independent Spider-Man film. And that's why the tone of these films that Tom and John have created together feel like a, a Michael J. Fox, John Hughes, indie kind of um, small details, awkward, beautiful humor, proper, deep, intimate love stuff with huge scope. But like at the essence of it is just pure heart. And, and that's what it felt like with John. It felt like there was... I was just so overwhelmed by how unperturbed he was by what he was trying to achieve. Like it was so big objectively, but his, his calmness, his ability to allow actors to improvise, to play, and then for him to throw out wild ideas in the mix, to let takes run and run and run, to, to give us time to really find what we were doing and to go down the wrong path to then find towards the new path, the right path. I was just incredibly impressed and actually just really grateful for the experience with, with, with John. He, he's someone that he's a real actor's director. And, and, it, and that is especially hard to feel in the midst of the machinery of um, a film that does have this scope. And I, I know that Tom will, will, will be able to talk to that even, even better than me. Yeah, Tom, that that's quite a collaboration you've had for the last three films with him, and he's done an, a really interesting job with this. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, John and I spoke yesterday for the first time since the film has been released, and I think it took us so long because we needed time to just kind of let the dust settle. And then we spoke yesterday, and, and, and the first kind of 10 minutes of our conversation was kind of like we, we're both kind of in disbelief of what's happened and what we've achieved. You know, I'm talking to him like, I remember meeting you for, for the first time in my trailer. I was 18 years old and you were you had never directed a movie like this before. And both of us hadn't a fucking clue what we were doing. We were both like, I, I, I was petrified. He was petrified. And then on this movie, we were able to put our best foot forward, go on that, go there day one and feel confident in our capabilities. Um, and it's just been one of those relationships that I've had that I will cherish forever. You know, John and I have no boundaries with each other. You know, we have no fear in telling each other how it is and being honest. And I think when you make these kind of movies, it's very important to make sure that you don't lose the heart and soul of why you started doing this in the first place. And I think John Watts was the perfect person to kind of keep that throughout the trilogy. Uh, but for me as an actor, he's kind of, he's like a gold mine. He, he will let you do whatever you want until you've gone too far and then he'll reel you back in. And he'll always set you on the right track. And he's someone that you can really trust. He's incredibly creative. You know, he never sacrifices quality for quantity. You know, like he is the kind of person that will shut a scene down and say, we're done for the day. We're going to pick this up tomorrow because it's not reaching my expectations. And that's happened a few times on this film and in the previous two films. So I've always really appreciated his, his bravery to say to the studio, I'm finished for the day. I'm not shooting this scene until we come up with something better. Um, I think that's an incredible quality and something I know I couldn't have done. I would have been like, yeah, just we'll shoot four hours over until we figure it out. Don't tell me what to do. So yeah, so I've always been a huge fan of John's and he's a great friend. And I'm so glad that you guys had just as an amazing experience with him as I have. I have to ask you, Toby, I'm sure people are wondering, so what was it like these costumes uh, the costume design, it's, you know, iconic. What was it like getting back into that suit? <laughs> um, well, you know, what, once you get through the process of, like, you know, really peeling it onto your body, um, uh, it, it was, I don't know, a lot of things. It was uncomfortable getting it on and then, and then it's a goof. And then it also has a sort of, um, you know, I guess, a sort of a power in a sense because it brings me back into that character it really does um th there's so much affinity for this character it means so much to so many people that you know once the sort of goofiness of of being in <laughs> uh lycra or spandex you know once that goes away you're like oh wow this is this is cool this is that sort of um a responsibility but a but a blessing like something that i get to do that i'm grateful for and so that was fun but but honestly like being with these guys it really was 
um, just a, a much, much richer experience than I anticipated or that I could really even express in words. I, I just, I know that's not the question about the suit, but, but, <laughs> but the suit is, it just, to get to be there with these guys in their suits and whether it was like dancing around or playing around in scenes and improving or, um, you know, feeling that kind of sense of service to each other um, and the character being in service to humanity, it, it really gives a certain perspective. And then, and then the, the kind of trust and openness that I had with these guys and uh, John and Amy and everyone, it, it just brought this really open, I don't know, I just felt super safe and like we were all on the same team and all in support of each other. And it just brought out this, this, uh, yeah, I don't know how to put it other than just like this really loving, uh, fun, creative experience that, um, that I was just like sitting in gratitude every day. Uh, which is not always the case when you're working on something, you know, even just from the standpoint of like trying to figure out what you're doing and, and it all, it wasn't without its challenges, but it, it all just unfolded the way it needed to, or whatever, just, it had a sense of this kind of destiny to it as well. So I guess the suit was the, the doorway to that. <laughs> it's, it's, I have to mention the theatrical experience here, which has been threatened and, and people say, oh, it's the beginning of the end and everybody's going to sit on their couch and watch movies at home and things. And this movie is almost single handedly being credited for proving that that is not true, that 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 movies exist in movie theaters at the way they were designed by their filmmakers to be seen. And this is the perfect example of a movie that it, if you can in any way see it with an audience, the collective experience of watching this movie is, again, it's like unlike anything I've seen in a long time, that, that kind of feeling you get. And, uh, and it's got to be preserved. And so all three of you are here, part of the reason why movies are going to go on to give me hope, <laughs> you know, for this, Tom. Tom uh, you in particular, you, you might go on and do more Spider-Man? I'm going to try to get a scoop here. Uh, <laughs> what's going to happen? I, the, the truth is, the, the truthful answer, and I've done a whole press tour where all I do is lie. Yeah. The truth is, and you're not going to like the truth, I don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. I don't know the answer to that question. This film, for me, was as special as an experience could ever be. Sharing the screen with these guys. You know, playing Spider-Man can be quite an alienating experience because you know we're you know the three blokes we're the only three blokes who have done it so to share that with you two and for it to have been such a wonderful experience of which i have such amazing memories i don't know there's part of me that feels like it's the perfect time to 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 jump off the building and swing off into the sunset and neck and let the next lucky young kid come in uh, to, to don the suit. I know I love this character and I know that I am not ready to say goodbye, but if it is time for me to say goodbye, then I will do so proudly knowing that I have achieved everything I wanted to with this character uh, and sharing it with these boys will be forever one of the most special experiences of my career. So if it's time, it's time. If it's not, it's not. But at the, at the moment, I don't know. Well, we certainly... Uh... Can't wait to see what you do next. And uh, all three of you, and again, congratulations, uh, Andrew, on all your other films this year, which are great. And I'm happy to say I've seen all of them in a theater uh, and uh, they're all different. And all of you are big champions of independent filmmaking too. So I loved what you said about this felt like uh, an independent film in its own way, even on the scale that it was being produced. And, and you're all big champions of that uh, uh, throughout your career. So um, keep it going. And thanks for joining us here and talking this rare opportunity to see three Spider-Men together. This is so exciting. Thanks guys.